and Mark New sat down with Mike Richardson, an artist himself, who founded Dark Horse based on the principle of allowing content creators to have ownership in the characters they create. Mark began by asking Richardson how Dark Horse comes up with its content. Dark Horse is a very original kind of company, a unique company. There is no company like Dark Horse. We create more content than we can use. We create it in-house, we partner with creators, we have people bring it to us, directors, filmmakers, uh, writers. Uh, uh, we, we, we mine it out of existing material. So with Dark Horse, uh, way back to the earliest days, we were looking for content all over the world. I was very interested in, for instance, Japanese children's books. And I think it was because of uh, the early anime that was on television, Astro Boy, which even as a kid, I immediately knew there was something different. Didn't know anything about Japanese content, but knew there was something different about it. Uh, and the difference is what intrigued me. So I just became in, uh, uh, interested in the, uh, that culture and of course that spread to Asian culture in general which my fascination with uh, the Chinese filmmaking community coming out of Hong Kong during the uh, 80s and 90s. Tell me about the multi-picture deal you have with Chinese company Love Vision and what you hope will come out of it. We're very excited we've picked up material and we're uh, we will uh, you know we'll try to make it so it's uh, We'll do some westernizing to make it uh, accessible to a worldwide audience as opposed to be regional. So that's, uh, that's our goal with that. So not only that, but to take, for instance, Chinese th the sources that I just mentioned and introduce them to American audience, which has very little exposure. I mean, American audience's exposure to Chinese material on a large scale is like limited to things like Kung Fu you know, 60 years ago or 50 years ago, whenever it was, you know, but there's not that in, in Bruce Lee, of course, again, 50 years ago, you know, there's, there's not that same, except for the occasional breakout film, uh, Crouching Tiger, for instance, it, it's, it's just this untapped resource waiting for someone to come over and bring those films. By the way, that material shows there's an interest and there's a market for that. It just has to be done well. There's been some recent controversy about whitewashing Asian roles. Um, Ghost in the Shell, which was one of your properties earlier, also when it became a movie, they cast a Caucasian actress, Scarlett Johansson, in the role of a Japanese character. What are your thoughts on that? Well, for me, um, that's for Dark Horse. I can't speak to their the decisions that others have to make, but we'd like to keep it authentic. A few years back, a big Japanese property, uh, the studio that we were talking to wanted to cast Jet Li as a Japanese samurai. And we're saying, no, Jet Li is Chinese. He's not. They say, well, nobody will notice. Yeah, the fans will notice. We'll notice. The people from China will notice. The people from Japan will notice. So it created something of an uh, internal argument. And as a result, the film never got done. But there, there is some of that. I mean, the worst one is uh, what the, the movie they made on The Destroyer where uh, Joel McRae is uh, the Chinese, you know, uh, and of course Mickey Rooney, that horrible, fam great movie, uh, uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's, I believe it is. Yeah, so no, if, if we, want, we want it to use uh, appropriate actors in appropriate roles. And it's one of the things, uh, we've talked to some uh, uh, film partners overseas and we're trying to find out, for instance, China. Uh, we've been talking to a company asking, who are the stars over there? Who could we bring over? Who has the charisma that can be international? Because that's the way it should be for the material. If you like what you just saw, follow us on social media and visit our website, cctv-america.com.